Hello, my name is Michael Rose and this is my Advanced Engines project. To begin with, you're prompted with the character select screen. I'll be coming back to this in a moment when I cover the characters, but for now we're starting off with the weapons. All the weapons are based off the base weapon class. This handles a lot of the common functionalities such as the firing, reloading, ammo management, as well as some common, common variables such as is automatic, damage, reload speed, and fire rate. From that, two other classes are made, which is the projectile class and the hit scan class. The projectile class spawns a actor on the shoot function, which can be seen here. This is the throwing knives, which their projectiles stick to the object that they hit. The grenade launcher, which on hit will shoot out a blast radius and the bow, which you can hold down and charge up, and then when you release, it fires. That charge up value, for the longer you charge it up, the increased value it has. On, But once you release, it fires out the arrow, which will find its owner, which is the bow, and get the charge value, and it will set its damage equal to that value. Next is the instant fire weapons or the hit scan weapons. This one, instead of spawning an actor, shoots out a ray cast. As you can see with my automatic weapon, it keeps firing until either out of bullets or I release the button. We have the pistol. This one fires every time I click. And then we have the shotgun in that it shoots a spread of eight shots before taking away one of its shells. Next is the characters. There are three characters, the light, medium and heavy class. They all share common functionalities of moving, aiming, jumping, double jumping and wall jumping, as well as a, as a slide button. This can be used in combination with the jump to launch the character a movement system with some similarities to a movement system like Warframe. Um, each one has a set different health with the medium being the weakest and the heavy being the most tankiest. Each one has a set ability. The light character has a movement boost. If I enter my kill volume, I can change between my characters to the medium character and show off the dash ability. The noticeable thing about the um, character select is that while you're in there, um, if you select a character before your respawn time is finished, it will wait for your, re -time, your respawn time to finish and then spawn you. This will stop you from just spamming out a character really quickly. Um, however, if you do wait and then select, it won't spawn you until you have selected a character. If I demonstrate, go to heavy, I selected immediately, I have to wait until I respawn. There you go. This one, as I said, has the tankiest amount of health, and as well, its ability is a ground pound that does a sphere of damage. Next is the object communication. In this one has a direct reference. This is a object or object direct reference. So the button has a direct reference to this particular light bulb and will only work for this actor type. Over here, this one has an array of um, actors, that being this particular actor type. And it will do a for each loop going through each and every one of them. Next is this lever, which once I press F, I lose control of my character. But I can use my A and D keys to switch which side the lever works on. And then if I press F again, I gain control of my character once again. And last of all is the interface example. We have the sound effect, the particle system, and the light bulb. This works similar to the, um, the multi-object direct references in the sense that it is made up of an array of actors 
and it for loops through each one of them. However, unlike that one, this one is just set to a array of just actors and it uses an interface to toggle on and off their their functionalities rather than having to be set to a particular actor type. Next is our my um, inventory system. It fires a grenade, which fires out a grenade projectile, which explodes after a set time. I can use tab to go between my items and X to drop. My healing item will just provide me with an X amount of health, and my invisibility item will just set me invisible for an X amount of time. Items that are dropped are just destroyed, as I do not want my items to be able to be re uh, pick up a ball afterwards. Here I have my managers. I've got two managers. I've got my spawn manager and my school manager. If I kill this gentleman here, he will spawn back at one of these three spawn points randomly. However, with this, it works slightly different in the sense that if I'm located near one of these spawn points, it will take it off the array of possible spawn points that he can spawn at, meaning that he will not be able to spawn right next to me. So if I kill him and I stand here between these two spawns, he will respawn back over there. And if I kill him here, and I stay here, he will spawn at one of the ones over there. As well as the spawn manager, there is the school manager, which when I kill him, it tells him, it tells the school manager who died, who they were killed by, and what team they were. So this will, I can kill him. If I keep killing him, it will keep adding scores to me. If I, eventually, as you see in the top left, it says team two wins, which is me. I, I do understand that this will probably be replaced next semester after we go into game modes as this is probably very irrelevant after that but ending up with the power-ups these are similar to the items but instead these are used automatically once you pick them up so if i pick up the ammo pack it gives me back my ammunition the health will restore health if i'm taken damage and the invisibility will prevent any damage from being taken for an X amount of time. That is all of my things in my advanced engines project. Thank you very much for listening.